Boy, am I excited about this week's video. We've got a ton of stuff behind me to get through. It's been a busy couple of weeks. I obviously acquired a lot of junk. I also went to a land at my brother's place. It snowed cats and dogs and uh, rats. I don't know. It felt like a lot, all right? But needless to say, the weather's getting better. Today I wore a sweater. <laughs> Before we get started though, I wanna remind you, we're giving away this wireless Brawler 64 controller. This is a wireless controller for the original Nintendo 64 console. When we hit 2000 subs, we'll be drawing a name for a winner. So make sure you enter. Details for that can be found in the description below. Also, while I'm reminding you of the description, make sure you check out the Patreon and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy old retro tech and people who have difficulty controlling the volume. In this giant pile of junk, there is something super f Cool. So make sure you watch right to the end to just see what that cool thing is. Let's start digging into this pile. What's up gang, Canadian Computer Collector here, and I do want to clarify while I'm clearing off the table here that some of this stuff was acquired a little while ago. It were items that I didn't include in the past hauls, but there isn't a ton of it. A lot of this stuff is mostly recent. Like this Privé TV that when I went to go pick up a bunch of computer parts, the guy said that this was part of the deal, and at 31 and a half inches, ladies, uh, and most certainly 720p, I didn't want it. He called it a monitor, but you can see it's definitely a TV. But shout out to this TV, it does have VGA on it. Next up is this really cool server tower. You might've seen it in the background of a few videos lately. I never included it in a haul video, but it's this really cool, uh, I think it's a 486 originally, server tower that I bought from a dude who also sold me some motherboards we'll be looking at later. Uh, to get into it, you got to pop the front off like that and then undo some side screws. And I always laugh at this old kind of case design. I mean, everyone was sort of just doing their own thing back in the day. And, you know, in this case, putting styrofoam in it. Very cool on the inside, though. All right, this is a random machine that came in that stuff with the Privé TV. I can only assume this is probably a Windows XP machine or Windows 7 or Vista or something like that. But, uh... And it looks like, and it looks like it's running Windows 7. Okay, on to this Macintosh SE FDHD. Now I do have a Mac SE, I do have a Mac SE 30, but I didn't have an FDHD. So when I saw this one come along real cheap, I scooped it up. Let's throw a keyboard and mouse in there and see what happens. Okay, so we have a working machine now. I do remember this guided tour thing is really weird. I've sped it up, but I'm not actually controlling the mouse right now. This is one of the most painfully slow tutorials I've ever witnessed in my life. Coming up next is something that I need like a hole in my head. It's a box of random RAM sticks. Now, I should say that this isn't too scary because recently I set up a very nice RAM center after testing a ton of RAM in my apartment. So looking forward to testing that stuff. This box is a, a little less exciting. A lot of random cables. I mean, this stuff's probably just gonna end up on eBay and sit there for 10 years. All right, this box is hopefully something more interesting. Here we got lots of mods. Looks like a cold cathode fan, a CPU and cooler. Oh, this is really neat. It's a graphics cooler, um, some headphones, and oh, what is that? Could that be a remote for the, yes it is, for the TV. And then a bunch of other crap. All right, these are really neat. Original, quite nice condition Time magazines. And some neat stuff like when The Empire Strikes Back came out uh lots of star wars stuff in corporate we got pac-man when it was game of the year uh we also have an old atari uh 2600 ad for empire strikes back by parker brothers um old computer articles uh, you know these are kind of talking about like the future of computing and what it could mean uh, here's another one on that level kind of mixes star wars in with the computer stuff uh we see three people on the cover but yeah this is all just like speculation about what the world is going to be like in a world of computing. And I guess we know the answer to that now, right? So here's hoping the future isn't enslavement. These I will leave on my coffee table. All right, next up we have a very cool looking, I'm gonna guess Windows XP machine. This looks a lot like some of the kind of cheaper overseas gaming cases that we'd see back in the day. Uh, I love that side panel though, and just the design of it. Oh, I'm gonna poach that blue power supply for my XP build. A little tricolor fan. And then there we go, we got an A7N8XE. This is probably a 32-bit machine, so we'll leave it there. This is just a gateway case, nothing too exciting here. This was really annoying to try and put back on, so I bent the clip down <laughs> just so I could fit it back on. This is probably, you know, I'm gonna put it on Marketplace for like 10 bucks or throw it in the trash. If you're interested in a gateway case, let me know in the comments. 
<laughs> All right, Compact Versario. You know, this and the gateway case we just looked at and the, you know, gaming machine we looked at before. These all came from the Privé TV deal, you know, same with those boxes and stuff we went through. Like, that was a great pickup for me. Uh, lots of stuff there, um, but probably gonna have to let a lot of it go, including that TV. You know, and again, I want to bring it back to the fact the guy was saying this TV was used as a monitor at one point. I feel bad for whoever's eyes had to look at this thing. And look how frequently it switches inputs just trying to auto-adjust to things. I mean, 720p up close? Ugh. All right, so we got this compact working. What do we got here? A gig of RAM, uh, Celeron, 2.7 gigahertz, and uh, probably just onboard graphics. All right, so this is cool. This is the box PC. So this is a, a DDR3 era quad core i5. I think it's a 6600K. Uh, and we've hooked it up with a solid state drive, Windows 10, power supplied. Uh, this thing we were going to use for our server build, but I don't think that's the plan anymore. But you were very mature. Uh, all right, so we've got 16 gigs of RAM and a 6400 2.7 gigahertz quad core. So while this is out, let's test some PCI Express graphics card. This is cool. This is a 750 Ti review board. So this doesn't actually have a serial number. This was uh, sold to me by a guy that does reviews. Obviously the card's working, so we'll move on to the next one. I believe that is a 7870 uh, with a fan blade missing. Um, you can kind of tell the middle fan there is down a blade. I'm not really sure how that would happen, but here we are today. Uh, just hoping this puts some video up. Kind of looks neat with that missing blade, you know, the way that the the fan chops, chop a style. Anyway, this card's working. That's all we need to know. So we'll shut the PC down, and I think there's another card coming down the road. And this would be an R9 285. Actually, quite a nice graphics card. I wasn't really sure how this ended up here, but after talking to my brother, it turns out it's something that he picked up for himself. So that makes sense. Anyway, we're here right now, so let's test it. Looks like it works. It's always good to see that little blue Windows icon. On to an Atom ColecoVision keyboard. I love these keyboards. They're fun to look at, lots of colors, and this is my favorite part, the wild card button. Uh, now, this is a neat piece. I have it on a piece of paper because the sticky feet are so sticky that it gets stuck to everything that you put it on. Uh, but this is just like a power switch box. Uh, I just really love the design of it and the font and the colors and all that. So lots of rounded IDE and colorful SATA cables. This is all stuff I picked up in the pursuit of building a colorful XP gaming rig. There's back with some blue Molex cables. And this is the leftover case from a light that I'm putting in my PC build, the uh, XP gaming rig. Anyway, here's a bunch of slot loader Pentium 2 chips, which I always think are the coolest thing ever, like a, almost a video game cartridge processor. Blech. Not to be outdone by Pentium 3 slot loader chips. Now, some of these I've tested already. You can see the post-it notes on them, but uh, some of them I haven't. But that's because I like to live dangerously. Sometimes I don't wear pants. All right, these are power supplies that I picked up for the XP build-a-thon that my brother and I are doing. Um, we wanted to build gaming PCs from the XP era, so a lot of these have Molex connectors only, maybe the odd SATA power outlet. Uh, this is a wicked case that I got in a recent buy. Um, so classic with the turbo and the reset button and the fat power switch. I just think everything about this case is awesome. But it has sat for a while. It has a little bit of rust around those power supply screws. Uh, it did come with a power supply, but I don't know if I would trust it. I mean, this is ancient. Oh, look, it also came with a John Cuniff card. Well, John, look like the kind of guy that'd jar your own farts. Anyway, let's get those rusty power supply screws out and put some fresh ones in and put the lid back on. And we'll screw that on off camera. Next up, we have this weird Ambra Windows 95 machine that I got. Uh, the keyboard I thought was gonna be one of those proprietary old school crazy things because it's branded, but it was just PS2. And it looks like the machine's working, so that's good enough for me. You know, I love Windows 95. I have a lot of memories using Windows 95. And actually, this is my favorite part here. It is now safe to turn off your computer. Next up, I have this very cool little IBM NetVista. It looks like it was probably a workstation at one point. It's got some markings on the back of what it may have contained at one point. I'm not 100% sure if that's all in there now. This thing really needs to be given a full once over. Um, 
I don't think it works because when I bought it, the guy who I bought it from said it needed some stuff. I don't remember what. But we're booting. Obviously, we're getting power. Just nothing is coming out. So, yeah. On to the next IBM. Uh, this is another little workstation. And this one I was told did work by the seller. But as you can see here, I'm struggling to get a picture with literally any setting. Just tried to run through everything. And leave no stone unturned, am I right? ladies. Uh, all right. So these are some really cool pieces. These are digital terminal shells. Did I say terminal or terminal? Digital terminal shells. We got a Deckmate and a VT100. Initially, I picked these up for free because I went to go on a call with my dad. He's an antiquesman out of town and it was in this rundown shack of a, a building. And anyway, I cleaned them up and I'm probably going to get rid of them soon. This is a Roseville power supply, uh, it's supposed to be a thousand watts, sealed in the box, picked it up for 50 bucks, probably sell it on eBay for 150. Here's some two broken down aluminum keyboards. Now these are always good to have on hand for extra parts, so that's probably what'll happen there. Uh, this is a Hyperion, uh, I believe this is a portable, it's an all-in-one with the keyboard and everything. It's not got like the leather belted case and all the crazy portability, but it does have a handle on the back. I know this one doesn't boot, so we're just gonna leave it, but we are gonna pull that keyboard out, just whip it out and have a nice close-up look at it. You know, sometimes I just love to whip it out. All right, this is a Mac Mini that I purchased thinking it was like 2011 or something like that and uh, didn't have any RAM in it. And I was aware of that, which is okay. I do have lots of RAM on hand and I recently tested and labeled. So I throw a couple sticks in there and just see if this Little kitten boots up and purrs. <laughs> All right, let's see what the Preve says. We'll use our remote to switch to HDMI. And what do you know? We've got a working Apple. All right, so we got a four gig stick in there, or I guess two twos. I don't remember what I put in there, but it does work. And it's actually a 2014. So this is a compact mini with a weird little spring loaded switch for the power on the bottom there. Uh, Running Windows XP. <laughs> kind of a cool little 10 or 11 inch, I'm not even sure. A uh, little laptop, kind of convenient to sit with. One of the things that really disappoints me about these little mini netbooks is they're always super limited to how much RAM they can have. Even there's one later on that we're gonna look at that's a bit newer, can only have a max of two gigs. This is what happens when you try and shut down an XP machine that hasn't been run lately. It just runs updates instead of turning off. This Sony Vaio once belonged to my girlfriend and we managed to pull all of her data off of it and uh, get it onto a USB stick for her. So here's the remaining carcass of her machine. Very classy looking laptop for the day, wouldn't you say? All right, moving on to this HP Compaq. Is that what it says? Is this both? Oh my gosh. Well, regardless, let's open up the side and see what we're working with. See if anything cuss has been done. Well, it looks like we got a graphics card that's passively cooled, but could have some juice to it. So this is a Athlon 64X2 dual core with two gigs of RAM and a GeForce 7600 GS video card. So it's funny that that would be passively cooled, but I think we've got a solution for that later. Here's another bin from that deal of stuff that came with the Preve TV. Uh, lots of cables, lots of splitters, sort of like a treasure trove of Molex splitters. Wait, enhance? What is this? Could that be a 128 or 512 or plus number pad? Well, it was. All right, so here's the other mini. <laughs> this is one that has two gigs of RAM in it and is running Windows 7. This is an Intel Atom. You know, not the most incredible processing power, but an incredibly convenient machine. I've been using this actually to use a uh, USB hard drive reader so I can read drives that come out of old machines on a machine that's not connected to the internet. All right, this blue case is the steel framed version of the one that I'm building my XP build in. Uh, this is a Chief Tech Dragon, uh, or, you know, it's been known by a number of different things. Alienware, Antec, uh, lots of different brands made these. This one is significantly heavier than the one I'm building my machine in. So this is like the parts machine. So this is a VIC-20 with a power adapter that I don't have a modern power source for. Uh, I have one for the round power adapter, so we're not going to test it. Um, I don't even know if this thing runs, but it was like 20 bucks. So, you know, how could you say no? 20 for a VIC-20. All right, starting into some motherboards. This thing is super cool. This is an MZN3 
three Z SLI Deluxe. And unfortunately, when I tested it, it did not boot. So I don't really know what's going on here. It's a, a dual core 64-bit uh, processor from the XP era. So uh, next up, we have uh, what is an MZN SLI or an M2N. I don't know. Those are Zs or twos. This one did boot when I tested it uh, later on, so that's a good sign. Uh, this guy, I think this is a Pentium 2. Yeah, that's a slot load. Uh, that one booted in testing. Uh, this is a Pentium 1 that had such a small amount of I.O. There's no way I know. I don't even know how I would test that, uh, so we're going to have to do some research. This is an Apple board, either a G3 or G4. This was given to me by the gentleman who I purchased uh, most of the previous boards if you look at it from, as well as that server case. And then here's another Apple board, either a G3 or G4. Uh, so if you know in the comments, let me know offhand, but we'll be testing those down the road. Next up is a bag with RAM in it. Now, most of this is DDR2 or single DDR, so nothing too exciting. Uh, then, you know, speaking of not exciting, these wireless Microsoft, like, what do they call them? Explorer keyboards or whatever they are. You know, the ones that are set up for using the internet. Yeah, I use, I like to do a good wrist rub of those. Okay, this is funny. This is a USB disk drive, but it's a USB portable diskette drive. Could it be portable? No, portable. Here's a really nice looking XP tower that we picked up from a guy out of town uh, just outside the city for, I think, $40. It was a great deal at the time. Uh, super useful machine. I've been using this to do a lot of benchmarking, uh, things like single DDR RAM, uh, AGP video cards. Now, this box had a bunch of neat stuff in it. It had video cards, audio cards, There's some really nice sound blaster stuff. But the most interesting thing is right at the bottom in that red bubble wrap. So in one second, you'll see. All right, gang, this is it. This is the item I told you to wait to the end for. This is the thing I thought I saw in the ad. And I was really hoping that it would be it. Here we go. It's a Radeon 9800 Pro all in wonder. Now this is a 128 meg card from back when I was a kid. Basically it was like an excellent video card. What would that be 2003, 2004? And as a guy playing Counter-Strike and going to LANs, I just thought, oh man, it'd be so cool to have that. I was too young to have a job and all that stuff. So <laughs> this is a wicked, wicked bonus. I'm going to test it out in this machine right now. Okay, come on, baby. There's power required. <gasps> okay, I think it's alive. It just needs power. Okay, well, obviously the card works. It just needs a four pin connector. I'm very happy. Yeah, I need to plug something in right there. Gang, that was uh, uh, quite a trip through all those machines. I am super tired and super hungry now. So uh, off for me to go make some chicken nugs and fries. No, I'm saying. Shout out to the 9800 Pro All in Wonder. Couldn't have asked for a cooler card to come in that bundle. This is something that I've wanted for a long time and I can't believe I have it. Very, very pleased. You know, it was just one of those stupid things like as a kid, you always wanted this video card. Now I've got it. As a guy who's 35, you know, this gets my motor running. Um, and uh, while we're giving shout outs, I'd also like to shout out our patrons for $1 a month. If you wanna join our Patreon, you can support the channel and get your name shouted out in each video. We are gonna give a shout out to Evan Grill, SK Link, Charlie, Larry Collins, Justin Morgan, Ron's Computer Vids, S Shrek or Shrek, Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, Trita Conrad, Garth Beagle, Mac84, Ethan Palomero, Bruce from Brankus Creations. And uh, you know, uh, anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Once again, this is a 9800 Pro all in wonder and I'm so excited. I need another pair of sweatpants. Off I go to go and change. I hope you will go and, uh, you know, join our Patreon, but also like and subscribe and check out some of our old videos. Also lots of cool stuff linked in the description. So be sure to check that out. Things like the website, social media. At this point I'm rambling, uh, so I'm gonna take off. Bye. Oh, and I forgot to mention the Brawler 64 Wireless N64 Controller Contest. We're giving this thing away at 2,000 subs, so be sure to enter. Link to that in the description below as well. Have a good night. Have a good life.
Shabadee, shabadoo. Jimmy Jojo!